Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new mini PC that just hit the market from a company known as Boss Game. Now this is the first time we're taking a look at a mini PC from this company, but I have seen them around on Amazon. A lot of lower end units, but their brand new model, the M1, is actually packing a pretty nice APU. 8 cores, 16 threads, based on Zen 4. It's got a cool little feature built in that some people might appreciate, some people might just find it gimmicky, and I completely understand that. But what Boss Game has done here is actually add dual stereo speakers inside of this unit. They're upward facing from the top of the unit, and you can kind of see them once we take a look at the top. But yeah, I mean, the overall look of the PC itself is pretty nice. It's constructed of aluminum, and we've got a nice little design on top that we haven't seen in many PCs before. And inside of the box, along with the M1 Mini PC, what we're going to get here is our 120 watt power supply, does use a barrel jack, also comes with a mounting bracket and hardware so you can mount this to the back of your monitor, wall, or underneath your desk, wherever you want it to go, a 6 foot HDMI cable, and our user manual. Taking a look at what kind of I.O. we get here with the M1, up front we get a 3.5mm audio jack, two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, we also get a single USB 2.0 port, and USB 4. This will do 8K 60fps out, and it's a 40 gig protocol, so connecting an eGPU would definitely be possible with this unit. As you can see with the sides, no I.O. here, but around back we've got our power input, another USB 4 port, also 40 gig protocol, full-size HDMI 2.0, full-size DisplayPort 1.4, two more USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, and dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Not too shabby if you ask me, and we can do up to four displays out utilizing both of those USB 4 ports, our HDMI port, and our display port. I wanted to give you a look at the internals, and getting the bottom off is super easy. We've just got four screws, and right here we've got our NVMe SSD and RAM cooler. It is constructed of aluminum with a built-in fan. We can go ahead and pop this up, and I would suggest just go ahead and unplug this if you're going to do any kind of storage or RAM upgrades here. And this one did not come to me bare bones. We've actually got a one terabyte M.2 SSD. It is PCIe 4.0, but we've got a free slot here so we can add another M.2 SSD. And this does utilize dual channel SODIMM RAM up to 5600 megahertz. So it is DDR5. As for the specs of the new Boss Game M1, for the APU, we've got the Ryzen 7 7840HS. With this, we get 8 cores, 16 threads, all based on Zen 4, a base clock of 3.8 GHz and a boost up to 5.1, built-in Radeon 780M iGPU based on RDNA 3. This will clock up to 2700 MHz. This mini PC does support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM running at 5600 megahertz, but the unit I have here has 32. We've also got two M.2 slots here, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this is running Windows 11 Pro. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this does have dual speakers built in, and I know a lot of these mini PC manufacturers are trying to come up with new ideas to kind of set themselves apart. I did want to give you a listen here. You can kind of see those speakers up top here through the grill, and these are Bluetooth speakers, which I found a little bit odd. Now I understand that you can connect your phone to it or other devices, but it would have been really cool if it was just kind of line out to those from the mini PC. That way we could play all of our audio there. But again, we can connect this to Bluetooth, and it actually sounds pretty good with some decent volume. <laughs> So jumping right into Windows, I've been testing this out for a little while now, and uh, as you can see, we've got that Ryzen 7 7840HS and those built-in Radeon 780M graphics. I went into the BIOS, haven't changed anything. I could up this VRAM here, but it's going to allocate what it needs. First thing I wanted to show you here was what kind of TDP this thing's running at. And over on their website, they state 54 to 65. What I'm seeing here is around 55. Now there could be like a performance setting in the BIOS that I haven't changed yet. But yeah, we're right there at 54 watts. And one thing I always like to make sure of is we're not saving some for that iGPU. So I always like to put a load on that also. But yeah, right there at 54. And at 54 watts with the built-in cooler does a pretty decent job and it's not super loud. I'm sure going up would definitely make it a bit louder. That fan would have to spin up faster. But I'd say at this kind of wattage, I think the cooler they opted to use here works great. And we're seeing some really good performance also. 
When it comes to everyday normal use case scenarios like browsing the web, checking emails, document editing, this 7840HS at 55 watts has more than enough power. Browsing the web, super snappy. We've got Wi-Fi 6 plus dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet if you wanted to go that route. And now the next thing I wanted to show off was some 4K video playback. All right, so 4K, 60, HDR. Got it set up, stats for nerds on screen. These chips have always kind of just powered through 4K playback, whether you want to stream it like here from YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, or run it from the internal or an external drive. With the 7840HS 4K video playback streaming from the web, right now with the way everything's set up, this thing's pulling around 14.6 watts from the wall. And if you take a look at Stats for Nerds, up in the top left-hand corner, we've got zero drop frames. Through this whole thing, we didn't drop a single frame on this video. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks. Here's Geekbench 6, coming in with a single core of 2,603, multi 12,369. That single core score is looking really good here, but remember, we are at a 54 watt TDP. Moving over to 3D Mark, Night Raid with a 29,838. And just to put this into perspective for you, a lot of the handhelds that we use at around 28 watts are around 26 to 27,000 here. Doesn't sound like much, but we're working with a low powered iGPU. Every little bit helps, and having that higher wattage on this HS chip is definitely showing it. Fire Strike, 7,657. And the final one we have here is Time Spy, 3,419. I actually ran this a couple times just to make sure that something didn't mess up. And yeah, at 54 watts, this PC is giving us one of the highest scores we've seen out of the Radeon 780M, at least the mobile variant. We do have the desktop variant, which we can take that thing way up. But 3,419 for an iGPU is really impressive. And it's showing when it comes to gameplay. So if you take a look at Afterburner in the top left hand corner, this is hitting 64 watts right now while we're gaming. I guess while running those stress tests on the desktop, we weren't hitting it up enough. But from 54 to 65 should be the TDP. Right now we've got Helldivers 2, 900p, medium settings, FSR set to balanced. We're seeing an average of around 75 FPS. Horizon Forbidden West is one that I've been testing out quite a bit on all kinds of iGPUs from Intel to AMD. Unfortunately, we're not seeing super performance out of this game just yet. And right now we're at 720p, low settings, and FSR is set to performance. We can kind of double the frames here if we use fluid motion frames, but I just left it off here. I didn't want to have to mess with it. And I suspect, you know, once this gets Steam Deck verified, we will start seeing better performance on these iGPUs also. Fortnite, I personally don't play this, but we're at 1080p, medium, and it's not bad. You can see we're up in the hundreds. We don't have any scaling at all on, and that's one of the major things. You need to make sure it is completely off. We don't want any scaling. Sometimes it just kind of defaults to trying to upscale the game, even on an iGPU. You want to leave that off, and you can see some good performance out of this game. Fallout 4, before kind of the next-gen update, Bethesda announced that they will be updating this game for, you know, all the consoles and PC. I've been trying to get benchmarks out of the way just to see how it performs before and after. Right now, 1080p, medium, we're seeing an average of around 65 FPS, and when there's large explosions on screen, you will see it dip down a bit. Here's Borderlands 3, and this one's always been a pretty decent performer, but uh, you know, once you get into the game, you will see some shader stutter, so you need to kind of get that cleared up, especially on these iGPUs. Once that's done, you can have a pretty smooth experience with this game at 1080p medium. We had an average of 88 FPS. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, 1080p, balanced FSR is set to auto. I just used the built-in benchmark here, and with FSR at auto, I believe FSR is really set at balanced, because by the end, we had an average of 105 FPS, and if you take a look down the list there, our resolution scale is now at 59%. The last thing we're going to be talking about here is total system power consumption from the wall. So through all of my testing, I have this plugged into what's called a kilowatt meter. It'll tell us exactly what the system is drawing from the wall outlet. And at idle, we're at around 10.2 watts. 
Average gaming jumps up to 69.4, and the maximum that I could get this to pull was 78 watts. So it's not an ultra low power consumption mini PC, but it is drawing a lot less than a full size desktop would, and we're seeing much better performance than we would from an ultra low powered mini PC, like something with an N100. When it comes to the new boss game M1, it's a great performer. I mean, for everyday desktop use, even gaming, we can get it out of the way. Having that TDP go up to 54 watts, and in some cases, which was odd seeing it hit around 64 while gaming with some games, but not all, we saw awesome performance across the board. Now, one thing here is we've got a lot of mini PCs on the market with the 7840HS. And again, a lot of these manufacturers are trying to do new things to kind of set themselves apart. And I'm not sure if adding Bluetooth speakers here is really the key, but if this is something you're into, then I will leave links in the description. These are up on Amazon, plus they've got their official site. And if there's anything else you wanna see running on this mini PC, or if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. But that's gonna wrap it up for this one. And like always, Thanks for watching.